All right, welcome back everyone. I am about to do a little mission to bring a fresh fuel tank up to my gateway station for refueling purposes for other craft. Um, and I'm gonna bring it up on my favorite little shuttle replica that I just finished. Um, I also built the, the tower for it, which I kind of like, and I think I'm gonna start doing this more with more of my builds, um, having a launch tower, because it always just seems a bit bare having um, craft out here sitting all, all all by their lonesome out on the pad but I am gonna have to focus on this because I've improved things reasonably on this shuttle but it's still a bit of a turd to fly it's tough It's gotten a lot more stable since the last few times I've flown it. Slowly tweaking and improving things over time. I don't think I've ever launched the exact same craft file twice. Every every time I pull something back into the VAB for something, I'm always tweaking or changing a few things. Oh yeah, the staging is goofed on it too, I always forget about that. And make sure that I separate my SRVs correctly. rather be a little early and not risk them smashing into me. Oh yeah, I can pitch this down. Perfect. Set my target, get my orbit. gonna shoot for a parking orbit at about let's see where's the station yeah it's way over there I'm gonna shoot for a 200 kilometer orbit while I wait for rendezvous nope <laughs> I think that was one of the SRBs wait no that's those what are you Delete. Oh, that must have been an old rescue pod. That was... I should really clean up my space junk. That was really close. <laughs> if I ever get, like, taken out at interplanetary speeds by some nonsense in orbit, that would make an amazing video, and I really hope I catch it on camera. But uh, for the moment, I'd really rather just stay flying. Oh, and I'm, I'm right level, too. That was a really clean ascent. It's tough to get it to fly straight up. Using the prograde setting in SAS helps a lot, but there's only so much you can do. The thing is so imbalanced and it just it's wobbly. It's poor aerodynamics. Um I don't want to rip on the space shuttle too much because it did build the International Space Station and it also a previous version of this replica actually built most of the space station I'm about to dock to even here on, in my, my KSP save but still it, <laughs> it, it seems like one of those ideas that looked really good on paper and it definitely captured the minds of a generation so I have to give it credit for that but functionally speaking it's just so unnecessarily complex <laughs> um, one of the features in here now I'm actually going to turn this on I have a docking port inside hidden that is at a slightly offset angle so that the thrust is lined up closer to the center of mass when I'm doing maneuvers. It makes it a little bit more accurate. 
just one of many ridiculous tricks necessary to make this thing work. Let's get our rendezvous. Guess I can set my target. Oh, not you. You. 31 seconds. At this point, um, I've activated my maneuvering engines. So the space shuttle had two sets of engines built into the, the craft itself, aside from the SRBs. Um, four R or three RS-25 engines, and then two smaller, I don't remember the names of these, um, engines that were used for orbital maneuvers. These RS-25s are great for ascent, and they're not actually terrible efficiency even in space, but they're a bit overpowered, and um, I guess I... I, I don't want to turn because I'm about to do my maneuver. I can't spin into the sun to show you. But the angles are different. The the RS-25s are pitched much steeper than these. These are terriers, um, at least in this build. So having them, after I separate the tank here, I'm going to drop this once I get pretty close to orbit. And I'm going to push the rest of the way up with just my maneuvering engines. But once I drop the tank, the angle of these engines is so far off that it would just spin the shuttle horribly if I tried to fly with them. Oop, that was perfect timing. It's actually pretty close to right, right where it needs to be. Let's get away from this tank a little bit. Turn off our 25s and hit the gas again. Oh, and this I need to actually, where is it? Control from here. These ones are closer, just straight on. Uh, they're still uh, angled a little bit to be pointing at the center of mass because they're kind of high up. Um, the positioning of these engines in the real space shuttle is a little odd to me. I don't totally understand why they needed to be so far up here. Um, I'm sure if I knew more about the internal construction of it, it would probably make sense. I'm sure a lot of this is the thrust puck and uh, other related equipment inside to keep the, the RS-25s running, because that's a, the RS-25 is a lot of engine. All right, now we're in orbit. Smile for the camera. I love this build, it's turned out so pretty. All right. Now we gotta wait for our space station here. So we're gonna speed up time a little bit. About 30 seconds. I'm gonna start the burn a little bit early. Just because these engines are kind of slow. And um, because it's not perfectly on center, uh, you can see when I get to the end of the maneuver, it starts to wobble off. It, I waste a little bit of fuel with this configuration, with it not being perfectly centered. Um, I imagine the real space shuttle had better navigation to handle that without any errors. But in my case, I, this was about 100 meters per second burn. I'm probably gonna use about 105, 103 to do it. I might put a couple more RCS thrusters on here to clean up the ends of my maneuvers when I do them using the H key is a little bit, H and N is an easier way to get the last couple meters per second of burn out of your maneuvers. Yeah, see there it goes. But we're pretty close. Point two is definitely close enough that I can get the rest of the way there with uh, RCF is if I need it. Yeah, 0.7. That's still fine. And 112 relative speed. 112, that's going to be about a minute burn. So that's T minus 13. So I need to warp to about T minus 11. 11 and change. Switch to target retrograde. Once I get to be about 
four kilometers away, I think I'm gonna hit this. We'll see. If I overshoot it a little, it's okay. I have plenty of fuel. I get to rendezvous in the dark. I will dock in the light for you guys, though. Come on, stop. There you go. All right, cancel our rotation and unload our module. Let's decouple, switch to, get my Oh right. I did this one. I did this assembly sideways. <laughs> oh well, not that it matters much. This will dock with very little complication. And kiss. Why is the station rotating away from me? Damn it. There we go. Should have turned SAS on briefly. And boom. So now I've got tons of fuel up here at my gateway station. That was the whole goal of this, <laughs> was to add a fuel module. Um, I, eventually, I'd like to do an actual uh, ISS replica. Now, that, Especially now that I have the space shuttle, I think that would be really cool. Speaking of which... Let's get this guy docked. And docked. There we are. At our station. So you transfer Verbi, you can come back, and Halwise is going to go back to the lab. You can sit up here. Wait, I did that wrong. Until I have some science data back for this thing to process, you can just hang out. Man, it stutters like that and my heart stops. Alright. And we're clear. Close our bay. And now it's time for the most exciting part of the mission. Re-entry. Okay. So let's warp to... The dessert airfield, which is where I start my burn here. Pretty much directly over it. And I'm going to burn now until my intersect with the ground is right above the island, the island airfield. Now between that and the atmosphere slowing me down, that basically gets me a nice clean approach to Kerbin. I'll even bring it a little bit farther in. Because I have such large wings for lift, I, I can move my... I can glide a, a pretty good distance even after falling through. Alright, right around 50k. I'm going to start to pitch down a little so I don't tumble too hard. Getting this balanced was impossible. Um, I built the little, well, not, not really a replica, but a space hab inside right behind the, the cockpit so that adds a bit of weight and I also added a small canister of ore underneath the or the nose cone for ballast um, 
that was the only way I was able to get it to do this. This is gorgeous. This is... I love re-entering with this thing. Landing, it's a little bit dicey. It's not really great setup for landing, but the re-entry is beautiful. I mean, this is... I, I'm not touching it. I'm not even touching my keyboard. It's just the most stable space... One of the most stable space planes I've built ever, and it's traditionally one of the most difficult to build designs. Yep, see, I'm getting pretty close. I could probably pitch down here a little bit now. Yeah, I could definitely... Oh, no, I need to slow down more is what I need to do. We're going to pitch up. And we're going to hit the, the air brake. Oh, I'm climbing. I don't want to climb. I want to stop. <laughs> I'd use the prograde thing here, but... Um Again, with that extreme deflection angle on these control surfaces, it actually wobbles really bad if I do that. I wish there was a good way to set control surfaces to be um, like SAS only or pilot only or whatever, like you can with reaction wheels. That would be that would be awesome for flying a, sh a space shuttle. All right, we yeah, I still need to. Oop! No, no, no! Don't tumble. Still need to slow down quite a bit here. I think I'm gonna slow down. I didn't. I didn't do enough slowing down at the beginning of this process. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna st almost stall and then fall, and then recover and then come down at the runway. I'm gonna make a. <laughs> this is gonna be a really ballsy steep approach, but it's whatever. It happens. Oh. Oh, I forgot to drain my fuel. That's why. Okay, I need to do that before I land. That is going to make... Usually I get rid of all of my excess fuel before this. Um, so that, that must be why I had... That must be why I had so much extra speed. With a, sen with a system as sensitive as this one, little bits like that actually make a huge difference. Alright. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, now I can make a much more reasonable approach. The aero surfaces, just the general aero design of the shuttle is uh, very unforgiving though. There's no touch and goes, even if I had the fuel, the aerodynamics of it just, if <laughs> you get one shot at the runway and if you biff it, that's it. <laughs> Not that any of the pilots actually flying this thing were at much risk of doing that. Most of the most of the shuttle pilots are used to flying much weirder nonsense for the Air Force, but still, it's a little bit brave. Alright, so let's hit this air brake, start slowing down. And get us our landing gear. Not that I needed them, but you know, for posterity. Hey, we made it back. A successful STS mission. They're uh, a little involved, but they're always very satisfying. <laughs>